Hey, Kentucky, welcome back. Time to talk some more topics. Now we begin with a return to that viral video of a confrontation involving a Louisville doctor and several teen girls, apparently over social distancing. John Rademacher faces a charge of strangulation in this case, which was not considered a felony in Kentucky this time last year. Now it's a Class C felony that carries a penalty of five to ten years. First of all, Keith, uh, strangulation should have probably always been a felony, I guess, uh, in my book, but yeah, this guy is going to get charged. I, I was a little shocked to find that out myself, but uh, now, yeah, throw the book at him because you could definitely see him push those girls out of the way and then go after one on the ground, and and that is what he's alleged to have done. So, Absolutely. yeah, throw the book at him. Yep. All right. The COVID-19 crisis has forced students across the state to learn from home. Some are concerned that means the gap between kids from different income levels will only grow as remote learning presents even more of a challenge than in the classroom. Keith, I worry about this every day. Yeah, I certainly do, too, because there are many who maybe don't have access to Wi-Fi or computers. And I know we've heard some places that were trying to get those out to people that were disadvantaged. And I, I certainly hope that's the case uh, in all of these public schools. Absolutely. A Southern Kentucky 12-year-old is putting his Christmas present to good use during the coronavirus outbreak. Lucas Strunk is using his 3D printer to make protective gear for healthcare workers and his community has rallied around him uh, to provide him with more printers and materials. Keith, how cool is this kid? Future Andy Bashir right there. He's going to be a governor someday. I mean, that is awesome that he is thinking that much to help others out with his Christmas present. That's it's so cool. All right. The Ark Encounter in Grant County has joined other family cities and businesses across the state that are lighting themselves green to honor the coronavirus victims. Keith, I think this is a great gesture, especially on uh, this Easter weekend. I'd love to see it from a lot of the businesses. I know some of the homes around me have done just the same thing, and it is. It's a nice gesture uh, to those that are struggling with this COVID-19. It's, it's actually tough to find a green light bulb anymore because so many people have done it. Here's a hint. There's some out there where you can change it four different colors, and one of the colors is green. So oh, look for one of those. There you go. All right. A design <laughs> studio based at UK has been working to transform an Eastern Kentucky mine site into a contemporary arts institution. The project also aims to provide new jobs, educational opportunities, and local business to the Appalachian community while advocating for the region's natural beauty and protecting its natural habitats. What a great idea uh, to bring to Appalachia. I love it. They've been looking for something. I've got a lot of family down that way. They're looking for ways to, to bring more people down to that area of Kentucky, and I think this is a solid idea. Absolutely. These are the kind of ideas that we need to, to bring that yes. area back to life. All right, the Kentucky Derby Museum is trying to make the best of a postponed 2020 run for the Roses. Starting May 2nd, the museum's online sales hub will offer over 300 Derby 146 items branded with the original race date, with 20% of the proceeds going to Governor Bashir's Team KY and Mayor Greg Fisher's One Louisville COVID-19 Response Fund. Keith, I like this better than uh, shipping over to uh, some country where the kids are all going to wear, like, the losing Super Bowl team shirts. <laughs> Yeah, so true. That is, is perfect. Uh, I love the fact that they're just putting them out there and now you've got a keepsake, uh, you know, that's got that original date and then you can go get the one for what we hope is September. I know. I sure hope so. And we end with a wild story involving an out-of-state man being pulled over for speeding in the bluegrass. A Kentucky state trooper had to contact authorities up in Michigan after he apparently left his speed gun on top of the driver's car. The man drove all the way back home before he realized it was there. Keith, how did that not fall off somewhere between here and Michigan? I know, right? I mean, uh, it was so strange. I guess he had some sort of cargo rack up there or something, and it got hung up on there, which makes a little bit of sense, but not as fast as he was probably going all the way to Michigan. Well, and we know he was going fast beforehand, so exactly. I'm assuming he, he probably kept that speed up. All right, tonight's wrap-up is next as Hey Kentucky continues.